What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I want to cover what's kind of going on with the overall market. We had a big sell off the last few weeks and we're seeing a lot of news out there. Will there be a huge crash? People are comparing this to 1987 and we're going to be talking about this. We got the government shutdown potentially in October 1st. Would that be a big bearish black swan type of event? There's a lot going on in the markets. You just remember that, um, you know, just a month ago, everybody thought we were going to all time highs. And now people are already talking about, are we going to go back to the scope of lows? So I'm going to tell you guys, what are my thoughts, what I'm doing during these times of uncertainty. And of course, feel right with me, trade with me. Make sure you subscribe down to the channel. Subscribe, go leave a like, share it to your friends so they can get financially educated. As always, if you link in the private discords, the links will be down below. But first, I want to touch base on what is this comparison that we're seeing between 2023 and 1987. So I have this great tweet here that I pretty much touches bases on everything. The comparison that we're seeing between a lot of people on Twitter, on social media, everywhere that you look, comparing the Dow Jones Industrial Average to the A1987 versus the NASDAQ today. So if you didn't know, I would compare the DF versus the NASDAQ because the NASDAQ was brand new. It was too new, it was not a major index. So you had to compare what was the major index at the time which was the DJI, DIA, the Dow Jones, right? It's still around, people still trade it, but do not have those tech stocks that we do today. Nowadays, the market's much all the tech stocks. If tech stocks fail, the market's gonna fail. So we, oh, that's why we're looking in the NASDAQ now. So we're seeing it currently at a correlation 0.87% or 0.87. That means that it means about almost, it's almost 90% is correlated the exact type of movements, right? We see a melt up up, which you guys can see down here. In this lower chart, we're seeing, um, this melt up up here, then then we see a nice um, crash, a Fed pivot pre-election here. History tends to rhyme. Conditions favor a credit event. So they're talking about credit event, a credit crunch. Um, you know, people uh, defaulting on their credit, not having a lot of money. 2008 type of vibes, but not related to real estate. So what is a bad? Uh, well, let's cover all these points. A melt up. A melt up is what we saw in the charts. We saw um, stocks rally really high. And we'll go over the trading charts in a moment as well. Then we saw a crash, the crash down, uh, which potentially is what we're seeing. This is all your fucked area right here that's potentially could be coming. A Fed pivot means that interest rates were going higher as we saw 1987 as we do today, and then the federal final pivoting. In fact, it's pretty close to pivot in currently. Uh, they did not raise interest rates last month, but they did say they want to raise interest rates 0.25 two more times probably for the year and then be done. Pre-election year, 2023, 2024, we're going to have the presidential election. In 1988, we had a presidential election. Of course, history tends to right? right? People do not want to ignore this. So let's look into the charts real quick. We're talking about a melt-up. We're talking about years of straight run, right? A really long melt-up up, you know, since the 2020 was extremely. Then we see an initial sell-off, the initial sell-off. And then we see a move up, right? Nice move up, you're thinking, okay, we're going back to all-time highs. And now you see, look at this, a big, big red uh, candle, which could mean that we are we heading lower, right? At NEM type of formation. This is really interesting because on the monthly, if we go down to the DJI, you're going to see it. I know I showed you guys the chart, but you're going to see how more accurate this even looks when you go to 1987. Look, let's go here to 1987 on the monthly time frame, and then we'll switch over to the weekly time frame. What do we see here, right? Delete this. I'll uh, redraw it. If you watch my uh, Instagram, you probably already seen it. Melt up, right? Pull back, almost pull back high, and then big down, and then eventually you go higher. So, is this gonna happen? Uh, is this very likely to happen? In my opinion, history yes does run with itself. I don't think we are in a situation like this just because times are much much different than they were in 1987 to what they are now. Even overall stock market, a lot of people were less investing, so you didn't have the. I don't. I find it very hard to believe. We will have another huge meltdown like this unless there's a true black swan event like we saw in 2020. So for me personally, I'm not expecting some kind of huge meltdown. Now, uh, did I expect a pullback? Yes, I've been bearish. Uh, follow my Twitter. I posted tweet tweets that was swinging puts. Uh, and in September, I was going to shorten Nvidia and think that the melt, you know, a nice pullback will happen in the month of September. As also we see seasonality. If we look at the seasonality of the stock market, September is usually very bearish. And in mid-October to end of October, I was going to flip bullish again, right? An overall macro, uh, my, and a macro set of things. And if you look at the chart, it lines up with a lot of these things, especially if we look at the monthly chart. We had a lot of liquidity that needed to come and get tapped on the monthly time frame. We remove all the old drawings. Look at the QQ monthly time frame right here. 
we had this liquidity here that was not tapped and now we tapped it. So now what are what are some areas that you know if you do want to flip bearish, where could you look to? My lowest target that I have, you know, and that's why I want to flip bullish in October to give it some more time to see what the charts wants to do, would be to come down and retest this area, which was a strong area of support, then to resistance that we broke out. So this is pretty much the bear market that we uh, most recently broke out of that we were considering and then finally we broke out. And now we're kind of coming to look for the retest. And now what, if you're looking, if you're bearish in the stock market, you must be bullish in DXY. The DXY is dollar index. Let's go over the dollar index real quick. We're going to see that these two charts are going to line up, right? The DXY is having a nice strong breakout after holding this level of support for months, right? This was the monthly liquidity. Fair value gap came, touched it, and now it's having a massive breakout. That's what's sending the markets down, right? But what is this more than likely going to want to aim? This month really liquidity that the left on the move down. So more than likely, we're going to expect this to come fill this monthly liquidity and then probably start heading back down to run this area, which will give a nice relief bounce on the macro side to the charts. That's why I'm targeting those. That's my bottom target for uh, the stock market, which we should see in the next month or so. That's why I want to flip bullish uh, at around end of October or so. Again, we will have to adjust the plan. But am I buying this dip? I have not bought one dip so far. But this will change very soon. I think there's going to be a lot of good dips to be bought on the way down. So start nibbling. So we're buying 5%, you know, 10% here. Of course, don't just go all in, right? Dollar cost averages, this is a great time. I have not bought anything on the way up here. I mean, you remember we were accumulating starting on this move down after this big red candle. We were accumulating. I made a YouTube video. Oh, I'm sure you watched it, right? I hope you watched it. We been we accumulated all the way down. And here we were sellers. We were selling on the way up. We did not buy into this all-time high move by the summer that a lot of people talked about. And now we will start being buyers again uh, after this nice candle starts slowly buying. And, you know, if it comes down the lower, uh, it, it will be very great. If we do get some major crash, I don't expect this to happen right now. I, I would like to hit all-time highs before we do see any major, like, thing about, uh, you know, a 2008 type of crash. I was expecting for myself to hit all-time highs. And if we did hit all-time highs here, on this move higher, if we came around anywhere between the ultima area and the QQ and the triple and the spy, uh, I probably would have been a lot more bearish than I am now. But because we didn't, uh, it, it started to feel extremely bearish, uh, like some other guys are. Now, let's talk about quickly the government shutdown. You heard everywhere government shutting out, government shutting out. Can it happen? Yes, it can totally happen. It's not something that we go through every year. I know there's always talks about it, but the government shutdown will happen with the first and today's September 27th. Now, right, let maybe they'll, they'll, uh, come to an agreement by the time that you watch this video let's hope so because more than the stock market we don't just want to see people lose money right like the glorification that i went through personally when i was in the army and luckily we still end up getting paid being part of the army and we have to go to work uh so you know it, it was what it was but last time in the glorification that was december 22nd 2018 a lot of kids were not trading but man i remember 2018 i remember this bull market first 2017 bull market all crypto 2016 2019 and then i remember the bear market and if we go back to that day right that's kind of that was our biggest government shutdown ever in history but memory serves me right if we go to 2018 we're gonna see something very interesting that happened you would think the government shutdown is a very bearish event and my first time around i thought it was the same day but the government shut down on december 22nd which was right on this date so government shutdowns are on a saturday so this is the 21st the market opened on the 24th, so the day this shut down on the 22nd, so right in between these two dates over the weekend, this marked the exact bottom of the bear market in 2018, which again, the bear market said they also had high interest rates, and then the federal decided to pivot and lowered interest rates, and then send it to this massive bull market until 2020. So a government shutdown event, more than likely, is going to be bullish, and the reason it gets bullish is this, the government, the, the stock market, remember this quote, write it down somewhere, got the market bottoms on bad news and tops on good news that means if the the worst thing that can happen is the government shutting down and that just happened why is the stock market going to sell off more right there is nothing else left the worst is pretty much behind it and the stock market is always looking for the next quarter right they're always looking kind of a little bit into the future six months in the future versus what's currently happening in the news so the government shutdown is probably getting right now it's part of this big sell-off it's part of this big move down that we're getting and probably more than likely why it's um it's going to be selling off so is it for me guys if you don't have any questions damn me on instagram on twitter whatever it is as always guys peace